In 2018, North Korea demolished its only official nuclear test site with a select group of international journalists as witnesses. But fresh satellite imagery reveals that a new tunnel has been built here to significantly shorten the distance to the main tunnel. This means that North Korea is actively trying to shorten the time frame for a potential missile launch by building more tunnels in a place they told us was demolished and abandoned. But the thing is, this is far from the only place in North Korea where something puzzling is going on right now. As there are reportedly 22 detected nuclear facilities in 18 locations across the country. And in 2021, the International Atomic Energy Agency flagged this location for what it described as quote, deeply troubling activities. The report indicated that the nuclear reactor here at Yongbyon had been discharging cooling water since July of 2021, suggesting that it was operational. It also flagged mining and concentration activities at the uranium site at Pyongsan. What I'm trying to say here is that North Korea is planning something big, and even though these recent activities seem like a clue to what is going on, I through extensive research now know they're most likely nothing more than decoys and North Korea's real plan is much more secretive and sinister. You see, it turns out there's much more to this story than just underground nuclear test facilities. As North Korea has an extensive tunnel network we don't know about, military equipment production facilities in Africa's underground, a smuggling ring enabled by its embassies, and artificial islands with full-blown military bases on them. And all these individual pieces of information are important to understand in order to fully grasp the insanity of North Korea's master plan. And it all starts with this sketch of tunnels in Yongbyon, drawn by a North Korean defector. These tunnels are interesting because they align perfectly with what we see from satellite imagery of the site. And if you compare this satellite image from 2019 to one from 2013, you can see that North Korea has covered the tunnel entrances with vegetation. This means they know we're watching them because why else would they cover their tunnel entrances? But there's still something that doesn't add up. Because why were they so careless with the excavated soil for such a long period of time? I mean, we can clearly see huge piles of dirt lying right next to the tunnel entrances for years, until the tunnels were supposedly completed. You might think this is pure stupidity, but I believe it's a carefully calculated play and they wanted us to see them. Hear me out. The reason I believe this is these tunnels that North Korea dug decades ago that went under the DMC and into South Korea. You see, these tunnels were built in the 70s and the first one of these tunnels was discovered by South Korea in 1974 and the last one in 1990. One of the main tunnels that were discovered was reported to have extended one kilometer south of the DMC. It is referred to as the Tunnel of Aggression and this is the last tunnel that was discovered. What's interesting about this tunnel in particular is that it was dug 500 feet or 150 meters below the surface, which is twice as deep as the previous tunnels that were dug just 240 feet or 73 meters below the surface. This means North Korea started to dig deeper as we discovered more of their tunnels. And what's concerning is that we haven't found a single North Korean tunnel since the Tunnel of Aggression in 1990. Until, of course, the discovery of these tunnels near Yongbyon. Isn't that a bit curious? Now, my initial hypothesis was that these tunnels were meant to be found because judging by historical data, North Korea has learned its lesson when it comes to digging tunnels, since we haven't found any in decades. So to test my theory, I studied the composition of North Korean soil. Yes, really. As well as the most technologically advanced tunnel detection devices we have available. To figure out whether or not North Korea could completely avoid being caught if they wanted to. And it turns out there's merit to my theory. By reading about tunnel detection technology used at the US-Mexico border, I found out that it's incredibly difficult to detect tunnels in the first place, and in some cases, impossible if they are dug deep enough. This means it's highly likely that North Korea has multiple tunnels all across the country, and even some going to South Korea that we haven't discovered and probably will never discover. This is a terrifying theory, but it aligns perfectly with all the information we have gathered so far about North Korea's tunnel activities. And when it comes to the giant piles of excavated soil near the tunnels at Yongbyon, well, it's simply not a mistake they would make unless they wanted us to know about them. And let's not forget the very reason North Korea is so interested in digging these tunnels to begin with. They want to prevent us from seeing what they're doing. 
capable of militarily and what their plans and strategies really are. They know we gather most of our information about them through satellites, and they use that against us. So why did they make the tunnel excavation in Yongbyon so obvious? Well, it's all part of their master plan that I can't yet reveal because we need to discuss the final pieces of this puzzle to fully understand it. As it turns out, everything doesn't always go to plan for North Korea and the few slip-ups they've made in the past have given us an insight into their presence in the underground of Africa. See, a few years ago, a Danish documentary named Mulwaben, or The Mole, got released. And in this documentary, they somehow managed to get an early retiree and a fake businessman involved in an underground project in Africa, the details of which are truly concerning. The deal was for the fake businessman to buy an island located in Lake Victoria in Uganda for $5 million, whereafter the North Koreans would take over and build an underground weapons and narcotics production facility. And to make the deal as well as the inevitable construction site look credible, a hospital was to be built as a disguise. Yeah, it's incredibly concerning. And judging by the North Koreans' handling of all this, they've done it many times before. And whilst it might be hard to believe, it makes sense because sanctions have been imposed on North Korea for a very long time and they need to make money somehow for their ultimate goal. So what better way than to make underground weapons and narcotics factories in Africa, where they conveniently have a few friends? In South Africa and Mozambique, for example, North Korean diplomats have been involved in rhino poaching. In Namibia, North Koreans have built giant statues and an ammunition factory. In Angola, they trained the presidential guard in martial arts. And then we of course have Uganda, where they probably have a few underground factories. But if there's one country in Africa where North Korea has been involved in some truly concerning and insane things, it's Egypt. Specifically, at the North Korean embassy in Cairo. See, Egypt had allowed North Korea to use this embassy as a base for military weapon sales across the region. And of course, Egypt purchased some of these weapons too. Eventually though, the United States found out about this and cut Egypt's military aid by almost $300 million. So it's not currently an arms dealership, but let's not forget the key thing here. North Korea used an embassy that's primarily there for diplomatic representation as a regional arms dealership for an extended period of time. So what's preventing them from doing that elsewhere? I mean, if you don't know, embassies and, most importantly, diplomats are pretty much immune to the host country's laws. The most fundamental rule of diplomatic law is that the person of a diplomatic agent is inviolable. This means diplomats may not be detained or arrested and enjoy complete immunity from criminal prosecution in the receiving state. So if we find out about other North Korean embassies that double as arms dealers, well, we won't be able to do much other than politely ask them to leave and impose stricter sanctions on North Korea. It's honestly a pretty smart strategy for North Korea. I mean, combining underground factories and the immune nature of embassies to deal arms is genius and equals tons and tons of pretty much risk-free money. Money that's been used on some rather puzzling things. And this is where the story takes a bit of a turn and I reveal the final piece of the puzzle to finally understand North Korea's master plan. You see, it turns out North Korea has built artificial islands near their missile test facility in Sohei, on which they've put full-on military bases. And when this news broke in 2017, every source was focusing on these islands, which is the wrong thing, as these artificial islands with military bases were most likely nothing more than a decoy to hide what they were actually doing, and doing in plain sight. Because right next to these islands, North Korea was building polders, and if you've seen my videos in the Netherlands, you'll know what polders are, but essentially polders are low-lying tracts of land that have been reclaimed from the ocean and are enclosed by embankments known as dikes. Okay, so we know what polders are, but why does North Korea want them, and more importantly, not want us to know about them? Well, if you've been following along closely, you might have already put the pieces together. If you haven't, then think about it. Why would North Korea deliberately try to bring attention to nuclear test facilities and artificial islands with military bases? Well, they want to build up fear by making us focus on their seemingly improving military. 
This is why they keep doing missile tests as well, like the three ballistic missiles that were fired toward the Sea of Japan this year. The reason they want fear and uncertainty is to avoid an invasion or attack. Because as long as we believe they have the capability to hit the US or her allies from secret locations, we won't strike in fear of retaliation. And judging by everything I've covered so far, and especially the frequency of the missile launches this year, it's fair to say they have improved their military capabilities. Which doesn't really make sense, I mean, how has North Korea managed to develop and improve its military and nuclear capability whilst being subject to strict international sanctions and scrutiny? Well, the answer may lie in the long-term relationship it has with China and to a smaller extent, Russia. And this is a pretty sneaky partnership. See, China has been a long-term reliable partner in what both parties call, quote, scientific collaborations that date as far back as 1958. These scientific collaborations provide a vague cover allowing Pyongyang to step around the sanctions through open research partnerships with China. A good example of this is a paper titled, quote, Active Steering Control Strategy for Articulated Vehicles. Sounds innocent enough, right? At least until you look at North Korea's military parades. Like this one in early 2021, where a convoy in Pyongyang shows off 16-wheeler trucks carrying the infamous Hwasong-17. But anyway, that's how some of the scientific collaboration findings are used. And guess what? No violations of sanctions. I don't even know how this is possible either. These collaborations have contributed a great deal to Pyongyang's ability to develop its latest arsenal. What I mean by this is that on March 24th, 2022, North Korea test-fired a ballistic missile aimed at the United States. There is some debate as to whether it was the monstrous Hwasong-17 or one of its improved earlier versions like the Hwasong-15. Regardless of which missile was test-fired, the message was clear. Pyongyang has no intention of slowing down its development of weapons of mass destruction, and they want to take down their greatest enemy, the United States. But this is where things get interesting, because if we consider all the evidence I've provided so far, North Korea is showing major signs of running out of money. Do you remember the polders they've been building and tried to hide by building artificial islands with military bases on them? Yeah? Well, the reason they want to hide these polders is because they are a telltale sign they are running out of food for their starving population. You see, polders are incredibly fertile and perfect for agriculture, something the Dutch have showcased for centuries. And it doesn't make sense to build them unless you're either in dire need of new land or food, or your country is so flat that it's in danger of drowning. North Korea has plenty of land for its population and it's not in danger of drowning. So the only logical use case is agricultural, which is what they've used them for as we can see from satellite imagery. This theory that they are running out of money is further supported by the underground production facilities in Africa, as they clearly are a desperate attempt to earn money. I mean, how else would they think an early retiree and a fake businessman was, you know, trustworthy people that they could do business deals with? I mean, doesn't really make sense, right? And the same goes for the arms dealing through their Cairo embassy. It's obvious they're trying to find every possible way to make money and survive. And they're trying to hide this weakness by utilizing fear and uncertainty. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.